Uh, we started in Tel Aviv, which is going to be somewhere right over in this area, and, and, and then worked our way through the full state. Uh, we actually started to the north and worked our way south and then came back uh, to Jerusalem. But <clears throat> uh, I appreciate her doing this, and, and we're, this is basically kind of an introduction to what we'd like to do on Wednesday evenings, except we're going to take a day, try to cover a day, in a Wednesday evening Bible study and, and do more digging in the Bible uh, uh, to uh, see these places that we read about uh, and things that happen there. But if we look at uh, Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4, um, it says, But when the fullness of the time came, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that He might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. Because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Therefore you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir through God. So we're going to uh, go through this this morning, and, and we will uh, hopefully see, and we're going to start with talking about the fullness of time, and we're going to finish talking about the fullness of time. Um, this is the sunrise over the Sea of Galilee. At some point, when we started planning this trip, we called it a vacation. Okay, But it was a study tour. Uh, I, I have never been a part of a... Uh, Anything like that was as well organized. I mean, from the time we got up in the morning until we went to bed at night, uh, meals and everything, it, it was a plan, a great plan. And this couple right uh, down here in the lower right-hand corner, John and Carla Moore, uh, are responsible for this. They do this, uh, try to do it a couple of times a year. Uh, we had great weather. We were very fortunate that... Uh, we had the weather we had, and then, of course, uh, there were a couple of disruptions while we were there, but they've had uh, two or three disruptions uh, uh, since we left uh, with militaries and things like this. But uh, we were very, very fortunate uh, to be able to go on this. And with that, uh, we'll get started. Introduction. At no other time does God plan His... Uh, eternal kingdom come into better focus than when you trek through the hills of the land of Israel. Watching the sun rise over Galilee, walking through the ancient battlefields, uh, touching the altar ruins and gazing over the old city of Jerusalem make every step toward the coming of Christ vividly real. From Dan to Beersheba, the hills sing of God's purpose from the time that God uh, chose Abraham to walk into the land for the first time until the end of the ages, Israel uh, will represent the culmination of the Creator's desire to reconcile mankind back to Him. Uh, when we go around looking at these photos, again, this is the uh, uh, Sea of Galilee. Up here in the top, uh, this is the Elah Valley, where David fought Goliath. Uh, we can see... Uh, uh, at Cherazin, uh, where we have altar and, and pagan worship. And then this is on a hill overlooking Jerusalem. And a uh, very complex place. Uh, and we'll talk about that more, like I say, on Wednesday evenings, uh, because we'll be limited on time this morning to what all we can uh, let you know happened there. This is probably the oldest site that we visited. This is Abraham's Gate. And you can see the, they, um, some of these things, especially if they're still in, in uh, progress of uh, excavating, they will build covers over these sites so they can uh, uh, protect them. It says, Abraham, uh, in Genesis 12, 1, get out of our country from your uh, family and from those father's house to a land that I will show you. And uh, it says, By faith Abraham obeyed 
when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance by the faith we dwelt in the land of promise. He waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. And that's Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8, 9, and 10. Uh, these are, of course, cities that we can read about, uh, that Abraham uh, spent time in, traveled through uh, in Israel. Yes, the, the, from the north to the south. Uh, sheep and goats, when you get into the southern part, will be the uh, desert part, and you'll see that's where the, uh, the wilderness, uh, sheep and goats and camels. The camels are still being used there. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Genesis 21, 14, and 19. Uh, we were just here, uh, I think, last Sunday, uh, Tim, in your lesson. Hagar and Ishmael wandered in the hills of Beersheba, Genesis 21, 30 through 33. You will take these seven ewe lambs from my hand, and they will be my witness that I have dug this well. And Abraham planted a tamarish tree in Beersheba. Does anyone know what a tamarish tree is? It's a date palm. And when you, that, that was one of the most amazing things when I got over there. I, I envisioned the wilderness over there, but the land of milk and honey, bananas, date palms, uh, almonds, olives, uh, mango, uh, grape. I mean, it, 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 the vineyards, the things are beautiful. Where there's water, and, and we'll, you'll see as we go through this and on Wednesday nights, water, high ground, valleys, all of these things are very important to this, this small country over here. Uh, here we have, uh, looking at my notes, Abraham dug wells where we talked about, and of course this is a modern day trough there for uh, the still water and livestock, but there's a well right in behind that. Um, and he planted trees. Uh, oh, this is overlooking a, a, a vineyard here. God's people leave the land. God said to Abraham, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in the land and is not theirs, and will serve them, and they will afflict them 400 years, Genesis 15, 13. Now the sojourn of the children of Israel who lived in Egypt was 430 years. It came to pass that all the masses of the Lord came out of Egypt, Exodus 12, 40, and 41. And uh, as we got here, 70 descendants of Abraham leave Canaan, and millions of Israelites return after 430 years in Egypt. Uh, we can see again, here's the wilderness uh, down south. Uh, these, uh, all, of, all of this area is around Beersheba, but these cisterns, water storage areas, are everywhere. And when you stop and think about it, I mean, they're, they're not blessed with rainfall like we're getting out here. You know, may get a little bit every day. And when they get rainfall, they want to, take care of it. Uh, some of the best times, best memories I have is our group traveling down in the bottom of these cisterns, you can see the stairways there, uh, and sing. Uh, well, the singing was, was great, very inspiring. Conquering Canaan. I will give you land for which you did not labor, and cities which you did not build, and you will dwell in them. You eat of the vineyards and olive groves which you did not plant, in Joshua 24, 13. And, and very desolate land here. Uh, we can see this is uh, uh, Lachish. Uh, this is a high place. This is a, a, a holy place here in the synagogue. Uh, there's a story that goes along with, with this that we'll talk about uh, in, in our Wednesday evening classes. 
This is Agrippa's palace here, uh, remains of it, and Mount Hermon. Mount Nebo. You know, I've got the wrong thing down here. That's, that's Nebo? No, that's Hermon. Over here? Okay. Mount Nebo. And we, we've got a, I think we've got a better picture of that later on, and I know we will on Wednesday evenings. Uh, the judges, you shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. You shall tear down their altars, but you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Judges 2.2. 2. And of course we know what they did. And here we have examples of altar seats, high, high seats, high places. Uh, both of these. Uh, this is the uh, chariot city of Solomon. You can see how they have a, I mean, this is the way they came in, right through this area here. Uh, if uh, memory serves me correctly, they had stables uh, that they have uncovered there, the foundation of them that would house uh, basically 450 horses for chariots. Uh, there, so quite, quite a place there. And then this is Mijido. What was the name of this place here? This is Beth Sheehan. Did they did not drive out the inhabitants of Beth Sheen and its villages, or the inhabitants of Dor, or the inhabitants of Megiddo. Uh, nor did Naphtali drive out the inhabitants of Beth Mesh, or Shemesh. Deborah, has not the Lord God of uh, Israel commanded, go and deploy troops at Mount Tabor? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor with 10,000 men and the Lord uh, routed Sisera and all of, his, all of his chariots and his many and his army. Uh, Judges 4, and that's verses 6 and, and 14. Um, many battles are fought in, in the valleys. Valleys are very important for their uh, uh, plantations, for growth. But we're, we'll talk about many of these battles uh, and the valleys that happened in these uh, valleys. And this is from uh, uh, looking at Tabor here from precipice, standing on top of precipice. Gideon. Then Gideon and all the people who were with him rose early and encamped beside the well of Harod, so that the camp of the Midianites was on the north side of them by the hill of Moray and in the valley. It happened on the same night that the Lord said to him, Arise, go down against the camp, for I have delivered it into your hand. Uh, Judges, uh, Judges 7, verses 1 and verse 9. And this is at... Uh, yeah, Jezreel Valley. A lot of a lot of battles there. And I've got a note here about the about Harad, the the well of Harad. I don't know exactly what area that's in, but that, that's what it's talking about there in the scripture. God's people demand a king. David was raised in the hills of uh, Bethlehem. David kills Goliath in the valley of Elah. And King Saul pursues David to the stronghold in Gedi in 1 Samuel. So if we look here, this is uh, the hillsides of Bethlehem. Both here and here. This is the Elah Valley. Uh, <laughs> We, we kind of joked and said that uh, they have a dump truck that backs up in the Elah Valley and dumps round stones every morning so all the visitors that come in can pick up their five smooth stones. Uh, uh, not true. There literally was not a sign where this was or anything. The guide that we had just knew uh, where this Elah Valley was 
and we literally pulled off the side of the pavement. Uh, to me, it, it, was, it, it was probably one of the most dangerous places we parked, uh, and we went up and down that valley, and, and we did pick up some stones. Uh, this uh, Ian Getty, it was amazing. I mean, we're in the middle of the desert. You can't see from here, but right back over in this area is going to be the Dead Sea, very desolate. Uh, it's a pretty good trek coming up to uh, this waterfall, but it's, it's a true oasis when you see these places. You can see the running water here, uh, a lot of uh, vegetation, a lot of growth there, and then this is Masada from a distance, and there's so much uh, history and, and uh, through the, especially the time of, during the time of Christ, just before Christ, and during his life, the things that happened there. Uh, Ian Getty is, is called the Rocks of the Wild Goats, and we'll see here in just a little bit. Uh, we actually got some pictures of the wild goats uh, while we were on our trip, our walk up there. Masada is a fascinating place. Uh, one of my favorite places that we went, uh, this, in setting these pictures up, you can see how desolate uh, things are, and you can see, you, you still see shepherds with sheep and goats out, uh, a lot of camels. Uh, there is a switchback trail that works to the top of Masada. Uh, right here, from the bottom, you can see the three tiers of Herod's palace that he built for himself up there, and we'll see a, a better picture of that here in a little bit, this is actually this picture here is actually taken from uh, the top level of Herod's palace, and you can see the Dead Sea back over in this area. Uh, luckily for us older folks, there is a tram that goes from the bottom <laughs> up to this. We had we had a uh, a few younger couples there and a, and a couple of young men just out of college, they did, they did not walk up, but they did take the trip down this switchback trail, and, and, and it, uh, it didn't look like, you know, it wasn't a place that I would look forward to hiking. If I had more time uh, where I could sit down and rest every once in a while, it would, it would be a great experience, but we rode the tram up and the tram down. Here we see uh, the goats, and in this area there are a lot of caves. And we'll, we'll look, uh, for example, we've got some great pictures where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. Uh, so uh, all of this area here is on the way up to the, uh, the En Gedi, get things straight. Uh, so you can see how desolate it is on, on, on really on both sides of you when you're going up there to those falls. It says, Now it happened when Saul had returned from the, uh, following the Philistines uh, that it was told him, saying, Take note, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took 3,000 men from all Israel and went to seek David and his men in the rocks of the wild goats. Samuel uh, 24, verses 1 and 2. And then... 2412 it says let the Lord judge between you and me and let the Lord avenge me on you but my hand shall not be against you and if you remember David had an opportunity to kill him but what did he do cut off a piece of his garment so he could prove to him that that he was there and he could have done it but he didn't King Saul and sons killed on Mount Gilboa. Again, this is Beth Sheehan over here, Mount Gilboa. Of course, uh, the valleys where the uh, battles uh, took place, Jezreel Valley. It says, Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled 
uh, from before the Philistines and fell slain on Mount Gilboa. So Saul, his three sons, his armor bearer, and all his men died together that same day. So it happened the next day when the Philistines came to strip the slain that they found Saul and his three sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. And they cut, off, uh, they cut off his head and stripped off his armor and they hung and they fastened his body to the wall of Beth Shean. That's in 1 Samuel 31. David, uh, divided kingdom, God's people disobey. Can you imagine that? Aren't we lucky we don't disobey today? Uh, there, there are so many lessons. We can see here uh, the high places. Uh, there's Jeroboam's uh, altar. Uh, there's the four-horned altar, one of them. Uh, we've got uh, Naboth's vineyard. We've got Mount Carmel. Uh, this is Hezekiah's tunnel. Uh, this is Donna going through there. She probably wouldn't li like me to tell this, but she can see how deep the water was in places in that tunnel that we went through. And, and for a six foot tall person, it was, I'm not claustrophobic, but there were some tight places going through that tunnel. But so glad, so glad that we did it. God's people are taken into captivity. It's Mount Hermon. Of course, north to Syria. So the Israelites are captured first by the Assyrians and then by the Babylonians and Solomon's temple is destroyed. I know, I know we're moving fast, but go ahead. Through the valleys. Normally, anytime we talk about a valley, besides battles happening there and a lot of produce being there, it was their roads. It's how they traveled. This was in uh, uh, Nazareth, and this they had uh, there's several things going on there that we really enjoyed. Uh, this happened to be in the synagogue. Uh, this is the rise of the synagogue worship. The creation of Jewish sects. This is where we uh, find those that appeared that were not anywhere in the Old Testament. And then the Greek and Roman rule. Uh, Jewish sects such as Pharisees, Essenes, Sadducees, Scribes, Hellenists, Zealots came into being and Israel became very influenced by Greek and Roman culture. Uh, Let's see, is there anything else I need on this one? Herod the Great. And we know that Herod the Great was a great builder. Uh, we, I think we've all established in our talks that he, he may have not a, laid a, uh, picked up a stone himself, but he had a great vision. It says, even though the ruthless and often evil person Herod the Great was used by God to prepare Israel and the world for the coming of the Messiah. Herod built roads and trade routes, military posts, and a viable seaport, water storage systems, and restored Jerusalem to grandeur. Uh, this is the Cardo at Beth Shean. The Cardo means the main thoroughfare, the main street. Normally when you see these columns in a row and we can show you some uh, a little better on Wednesday evenings. They'd have a double row of those columns. That would be the main thoroughfare, and then there would be shops set up on both sides of those. Uh, the yeah, the Caesarea Maritian Maritian is was fantastic. This is. Uh, Herod's palace that jutted out into the, into the Mediterranean. Uh, it was just amazing. At the uh, we had uh, 
Bible studies, devos, and lessons at many places like this. Uh, and, and, and you can see here's another cistern in this area. Uh, the, the temple wall there in Jerusalem. This particular stone uh, is the largest stone that they found in this temple wall uh, that they've uncovered. And this stone was uh, like 57 feet long, okay? Weighed over 600 tons. Uh, it's just amazing how they were able with their limited, I mean their mechanics was rope and pulley, dollies, uh, rolling on logs. Uh, it's just amazing. Standing on top of Masada, you can look down and see the, the three tiers of Herod's temple here. And, and this statement, God using Herod, I mean, he paved the way. It, without him, without him, Jerusalem may have been scattered, or the, the, the Jews may have been scattered, Israelites scattered everywhere, never to return for the coming of the Messiah. But he paved the way for that. God uses men and nations for his purpose. I got ahead of myself, didn't I? Here we have the hills of uh, Bethlehem again. This is the carpenter in the reenactment area there in, in the old town Nazareth. Uh, this is a synagogue in Capernaum. And then this is a sheep, sheep gate into Jerusalem from the old wall, but it's now called, if you'll notice, it's now called the Lion, Lion Gate, Lion's Gate. Uh, many believe that without Herod the Great, it is unlikely that the nation of Israel would have survived Roman conquest. Without Herod, Rome likely would have once again destroyed Jerusalem as well as Israel and dispersed the Jews. And we can see by the beginning of the first century, this Greek and Roman influence had really Come into uh, come into play with with their worship and, and of course why you're seeing more uh, pagan worship also. The Jordan River. I, in my mind, I had the Jordan River much more grandeur uh, than it was. Just across here is Jordan. And just out of this photograph, back this way, is a young man in a green uniform uh, carrying an AK-47. You know, uh, you can see the tops of people's heads here. There were people standing in line waiting to be baptized in the Jordan River there. And then right across, this guy's over here making sure nobody got on their side. So they're uh, very territorial. We'll see the difference in the... Jordan here in a moment in a, in a picture. Jesus is tempted in the wilderness. Just overlooking, it says, Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. Luke chapter 4. Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until the opportune time. This is, in, of course, again in southern, southern Israel. All of these pictures are. Jesus begins his ministry. Again, a sunrise over the Sea of Galilee. This is a, a devotional that we had in the synagogue at Capernaum. Um, I, I can't tell you, I can't tell you the feeling that there were times that you couldn't keep the hair down on the back of your neck in some of these places when, when we were there and, and, uh, and, and reading and studying the Bible. Uh, every, everyone in this group, and we'll talk about this group a little more, but uh, everyone had their Bible and uh, uh, it was a, a study walk uh, through this land. Jesus in Galilee. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness 
and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went through, uh, throughout all Syria. Great multitudes followed him. Matthew chapter 4. Uh, when, we, when we look at this slide, uh, we see uh, uh, the Sea of Galilee here. Uh, this is Tiberias, just, just across from the Sea of Galilee. And then this is, we're on top of Mount Arbel. And, and you, this is the view you have all the way around, uh, this Mount Arbel. It's not, it's not mentioned or tied down exactly, but this is probably where Christ went to for quiet time, for prayer. Jesus at Caesarea Philippi. Uh, this is hard, hard to read here, but this is Caesarea Philippi, and you can see the Temple of Pan. Uh, you can see uh, uh, idol worship here. This is the headwaters right here of the Jordan River. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples, saying, Who do you men say that I am? Okay. They said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah. Or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And we find this in, in Matthew uh, in verses 13 through 18. So here's where Peter makes his confession. Jesus is in Jerusalem. It says, Now there was in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool. Pools are very prevalent over there. They wash a lot. Now that's how they cleanse themselves from sin. Uh, this, this pool, which is called in Hebrew Beth Bethesda, having five porches, Jesus heals the invalid. And John chapter 5, verses 1 through 15. And, and I'm looking at this area here. Here's, a, a, again, a picture of the lion's gate. Or the, uh, in Jesus' time, it was called the sheep's, sheep gate. And then this is, they're in the middle of excavation here, outside of that gate, is Siloam's pool. Jesus weeps over Jerusalem, and Jesus observes Passover with the twelve. Uh, this is a view of Jerusalem. Here you can see a portion of the wall from the Mount of Olives. This Byzantine structure is built over the place that they think, where they think the upper room was. In many instances, you're going to find there'll be two places that that will be claiming to be someplace like this. Uh, but th this was supposed to be that area uh, and, and the best preserved and on on the tour list side of the upper room. This is first century church, uh, first century uh, walkway uh, going down to uh, the Kidron Valley, and this is coming out of Caiaphas' house, wasn't it? Uh, high priest uh, home down to the uh, Kidron Valley. Jesus at Gethsemane uh, says, uh, Then they came. Then they came to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. Rise, let us be going. Uh, see, my betrayer is at hand. And we know what they did. He, he, left, he left the apostles to watch out for him, and they couldn't stay away. Uh, Gethsemane means olive press. 
and there are a lot of olive presses and remnants of olive presses over there. Uh, this tree is not the tree that we saw that we took a lot of pictures of, but this tree is somewhere in the neighborhood of a thousand years old. And, and uh, they showed us, they, there, there's a tree in Gethsemane where uh, they really protect it, and it, they know that it is from uh, the genetics of the olive trees that were there at that place during Jesus' time. Uh, you look in the background, there's tombs on the hillside overlooking Jerusalem. Uh, people that are being put in their tombs they're basically lined up because they feel like Christ, when He comes back, of course, they were expecting Him back real soon. They want to be first in line to rise. So it's, it's a, a place where you'll see when you're in Jerusalem looking out around across that Kidron Valley, you'll see a lot, a lot of tombs there. Jesus is arrested and led into Jerusalem for a trial. It says, Then they laid their hands on him and took him, and they led Jesus away to the high priest. They bound Jesus, led him away, and delivered him to Pilate. This is the pathway uh, from, uh, of course, you can see Gethsemane. Uh, uh, both of these. And then here is Herod's. Uh, uh, tower just above what is called now the hidden gate uh, and and uh, this is where we get into places that uh, that are can be so emotional when you read and study what happened here this is a basement or cellar under Caiaphas house this is probably where Jesus spent the night uh, these holes that were cut into the rocks of course they've got some ropes there it's where they uh, he was probably tied up and spent the night in, in Caiaphas' uh, cellar or a low place in his house. Just outside of Caiaphas' house uh, is an area where uh, Peter denied Christ. It says, Immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows, you will have denied me three times. So Peter went out and wept bitterly. And this is a monument of Peter's denial on the traditional site. Jesus is sentenced to die. Um, this is the area here, uh, and... It, and this photograph does not show it, but you can see where the gate used to be, but it's rocked up now. Uh, the second Sunday we were there, this is where we had our worship service, on the ground right out here. And this is where uh, uh, Jesus was brought out, and Pilate said, Behold the man, or behold your king. Uh, it says the west wall of Jerusalem near the hidden gate the likely place that Pilate brought out Jesus for the final time, and Jesus was led through the streets of Jerusalem. And here, again, here's a, a cardo. And there's just places that they have gotten down to the first century. This is place after place, generation after generation, built on top of each other. And many places... Uh, it's so interesting. We've got some pictures and, and things, uh, places that we visited where that, that country is built up as much as 50 feet through the years. And that's how far down they have to go to get to this first century level. We're, we're going to have to roll. We're, this is a picture of Galgotha. Uh, we've got a better picture of it, but for whatever reason down here in this area is a bus parking lot. So this picture was taken to hide the buses, but when you back off and, and look at it, you can see the skull shape. Uh, this is, of course, close to the uh, uh, garden 
where the garden tomb is. In Nazareth, this is a replica, uh, in my opinion, not a very good one, but when they would roll a stone over in front of a tomb. The church begins. Traditionally, this is uh, uh, southern steps of the wall or temple gate uh, there in Jerusalem. And uh, tradition says this is where Peter uh, made his, uh, had his sermon there. And we took pictures of pools. I think here a Sunday or two ago we were talking about 3,000 being uh, baptized at, there in Acts chapter 2. Uh, they say, what must we do and, and uh, rise and repent and, and be baptized to all of you? There are over 400 pools right there in a, uh, a pretty confined area. So uh, that's the way I guess they could have got the 3,000 done. You know, if you want to look at logistics, uh, I think Jim said it didn't, he, he wasn't worried about logistics. God said it, so that's the way it was. So. Uh, but some of us try to figure out how, how did these, these things happen. Here we go back to the fullness of time. When the fullness of time had come, God sent His Son. Everything's been in preparation for Christ. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of His sins, according to the riches of His grace, which He made known to us, mystery of His will, according to His good pleasure, which He purposed in Himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Ephesians chapter 1. If everyone in here went and took this tour that I did, we might all have a different answer for this what Israel meant to me. I'm sure the, the four of us that went, uh, uh, including Nikki and Donna, we probably all had places that were special to us. Uh, you can see this is the uh, Weeping Wall, the Western Wall, uh, St. Anne's Church, Tomb of the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. Here's the Dome of the Rock. Here's a slab that in the Church of the Holy Sepulcher they said Jesus laid. Singing in, the, in, in these churches was very special. Um, in, in a grand way, this is where the Catholics say that the tomb of Christ was. I, my special place was the garden quiet. I mean, you hear God's sounds. When you're in, in uh, uh, those olive groves where Christ prayed, when you're in that garden there by the tomb, if you hear any talking, it's very low murmurs. Uh, but it, uh, very, very special places. Uh, a lot, a lot of religions are more about this, more about these things, this wall. These people are, are worshiping their traditions more than God's Word. Outside, here we are outside of uh, the hidden wall, our worship service. You can see us lined up. We had a young man from California that brought the message and the title of his message was uh, Behold the Man. Uh, we're praying. The first Sunday we were there, the first day we got uh, off the plane in Tel Aviv, this is the Church of Christ of Nazareth. Uh, a great small congregation there, the only congregation in Israel. Here we are in a, uh, another Devo situation, singing in, in these uh, uh, cathedrals. Uh, pardon me? Yeah. 
uh, the, the elders the, that we had in the group that day, that morning, got together and had a special prayer time. Uh, this was in this is in the Mount of Olives, wasn't it? Yeah. Very special places. This is a this is a devo happening here. My memories. There were thirty nine people, including including. Uh, there are two guides. Where are you talking about? You talking about here? Yeah, Shafiq was our guide, a uh, uh, special guide. He historically, biblically, uh, he was just a, a wealth of knowledge, but he has never obeyed the gospel, uh, and and he's been he's been. Uh, going with the Moors on this trip since 2015. Uh, so they have not given up yet, but uh, I know we, we carried a Bible from here with us to study over there, and what shekels we had left, we put in that Bible and presented it to Svika uh, as we, our last tour day to give him, and, and we don't know what he did with that Bible, but you know, hopefully he will, and, and, and he may get one every tour, but anyway, we felt like that's what we wanted to do. So there is a, a hopefully a Blooming Grove Church of Christ Bible in Speaker's home today. But a very special trip. Uh, we felt very fortunate. Uh, I know I, I told the men it's hard for me to not get emotional. A lot of, uh, a lot of the things that we saw and did, and especially when we gather around this table, uh, it's just uh, it's very uh, emotional for me still uh, because I'm still unfolding and unpackaging things that we did over there that it's, it's just such an overload of information and there's so many emotions uh, that you go through in this trip. Uh, and, and, I, and, and like I say, I'm still unpackaging some of that stuff and, and, learn, and finding more all, all the time. Uh, I hope, hope I haven't bur burdened you with this, bored you with it. Uh, I know it was fast, uh, and I look forward, if we decide that we still want to do this, going through Wednesday evening and really taking some time and, and bouncing things back and forth and talking about some of these pl places. This is just a tip. A small tip of the iceberg, so to speak. And we'll finish there, Tim. You want to get the lights?